The trailer for Assassin's Creed Valhalla is out, and with it being inspired by the history of the Viking Age, let's see how it compares to actual history. Okay, so at the start we see very central in the middle of the shot, we see a stab church. This is very distinctly a Nordic design, though it is not from the Viking Age. Stab churches are distinctly Christian churches from the 12th through the 14th century. Now it is possible that some great large Nordic architecture, maybe some pagan temples or great central halls might have been made in a similar manner, but not in the exact same manner as we see here. Staff churches have in their architecture Christian symbolism. They are distinctly Christian, but the rest of the town looks pretty good, and this clearly appears to be Norway by the fact we're in a fjord and the mountains nearby. Now let's continue on. They are heartless. I like the colorful clothing, and I get to, from it appears that if someone talked about how other people would have talked about the Vikings or Nordic peoples, and then actually showing the Nordic peoples how not exactly how people view them. Most of this clothing here looks pretty good, though that axe is very fantasized, and running around with a wolf skin over your shoulders, not saying I know of them doing, but maybe it's a possibility. Those shields most likely would have some type of facing, either linen or hide. Though there is a possibility some people have shields without such facing. But the rim most likely would not be iron. There are a few examples of iron rimmed shields, but most have a raw hide rim. Also, they wouldn't be that thick. There are a few examples of that thick, but most taper down towards the edges and get rather thin at the edge. Actually, make the shield easier to use and more wieldy. Godless barbarians. I don't know what to say about this I guess, priestess's outfit. I don't think it's accurate. I'm not 100 sure about that. Okay, fur mantles. There's not much evidence for them wearing fur mantles on their shoulders at this period. Some may have, but more often depicted are cloaks or heavy leather or wool coats worn when out at sea to keep the water off. Viking raid, okay. Murder and kill blindly. Okay, here we see one Viking stopping another and sparing a woman and children. Now, this is a possibility it could have happened, though it seems not to have been a common occurrence. As there was a specific Viking who, he was specifically nicknamed because he was known for sparing children. They actually, his nickname meant child level, lover because he spared children. And so his fellow Vikings found him odd oh, and unusual. So most most likely wouldn't have, but this is a possibility. And it does show a kind of difference. So some they would be viewed one way, some might not always be that way, and this is some differences. So this is fine. Scar the lands of England. Lands they will never defend. Okay, yes, we definitely have in this dialogue where like an English king would at the time, maybe of Wessex or of May or Mercy or one of the other kings would say about the Vikings. In contrast to the Vikings actually settling in England and saved their own kingdom. At one point even called the Dane Law, where much of England was ruled by Danish kings and was ruled. And their law. Never love. 
The time has come. Okay, so this is supposed to be English King. The outfit he's wearing seems a little... It's not... I can't think of a place on any specific historical outfit of a period, but it seems to be more inspired by a later, maybe, 13th or 14th century outfit than appropriate time. And also, English crowns of time seem more of a circular a band without any added crosses in time. There might be examples of one to do, so I'm not sure about that. To speak to them in a language they will understand. Once again, excessive fur mantles. But the ships look pretty good. Fire arrows! Fire arrows! Now, fire arrows did exist, but they have specific circumstances they use for. And they usually wouldn't be burning there. They're more of like burning coal arrows, where you would light a specific material inside of a specific type of arrow on fire and use them at sieges to hopefully cause some problems within the city or fortress or castle you're besieging, as the burning coals inside the, the arrows, which the arrows would be shorter range and wouldn't fly as well, but hopefully they'll land in some like straw or some roofs. That troops and maybe catch a few of them on fire, causing the defenders to have to use up water, valuable their water resources, to put them out, therefore showing how long they can resist. You wouldn't use them against troops, and definitely not in this hierarchy against ships. It would be relatively ineffective, as they wouldn't be burning hot like this, they'll be as smoking coals. Shield! Also, one thing I didn't mention earlier, these shields are kind of small in diameter, and this is why. If they're small in diameter, you'll be hit by arrows. You need a larger diameter shield most of the time. And you'll probably either lock your shield if you're blocking against arrows. And they shouldn't be burning that much. So okay, here we see a painting of these Anglo Saxons, I don't know what kingdom this would be from, are using kite shields, and we have are Vikings here using round shields. And now as you, round shields and kite shields were used at the same time. The so kite shields were introduced near the end of the Viking era, roughly in the 10th century. And they would and round shields would be phased out for them. Though so if this is near the end, though you would see them though most likely both Anglo-Saxons and Vikings would be using both round shirts and kite shirts since they were used at the same time. Slowly, the round shirts being replaced by the kite shirts. These kite shirts were better close to the end for cavalry. As they seem to be specifically maybe designed for cavalry as they can cover the person's body, the neck of the horse, and the person's legs. Also, common but defined here, they broke up in small one-on-one -on -one duels. That's not how they fought at the time. That's not how you fight. If you break into one-on-one -on -one duels to fight a battle, you end up in the end with only one person left on one side if everyone's equally as good of a fighter. And then that's a loss on both sides. It's both lost their entire army. You don't fight in that manner. You use formation tactics and lines so that you can dominate over the other side with minimal casualties. These individuals are very unskilled in their swings, and how the sky we see here on the right, the Anglo Saxon right, standing, he would have fall over just trying to swing that way. He, this, this Viking doesn't even need to stab him, just let him fall over. Also, we see the Anglo Saxons are depicted with helmets, and the Vikings are not. Most likely, if it's at the end of the Viking era, most people will be wearing helmets. Earlier, yes, most people wouldn't be wearing helmets on either side. Also, we clearly have the Anglo-Saxon troops being depicted having uniforms, 
a standard uniform for army was not yet a thing. You might have the retainers of a lord might have similar outfits, but most likely most soldiers would have very different outfits. But maybe you have markings on the shield to show who they are allied with, so what lord is there, so that they can communicate and coordinate in battle. But you wouldn't have a standard uniform. That's normal thing games and movies do, right? so people can understand better what's going on. Why are your banners tattered, and why is this person wearing what seems like a very fantasized, inspired by? Okay, it's kind of a little bit Roman, a little bit Greek, maybe a little bit of Roman helm, a little bit of Corinthian helm inspired helmet there. Also, the Vikings just seem to be wearing hodgepodge outfits, even though they'd be mostly wearing these regular daily clothes, or maybe regular daily clothes with lamblot scale or male armor thrown on top. They would look more similar to the Anglo Saxon soldiers. Though, I guess for game reasons, you don't have that, so you don't confuse them. That spear over penetrated with Mel on that spear would struggle to even penetrate through the Mel and definitely would not go through both sides and through the whole person's body. Ah, uh, those helmets Anglo Saxons were inspired by a helmet of the earlier, or at least that one in the earlier, slightly before the Viking Age, migration era. Anglo-Saxon helm that may still been used in the early Vikings. Then we also got a nasal helm, which would fit for the late era. That axe is too big. Okay, that this guy's this I guess champion's armor is interesting. It's a scale arm that kind of somewhat reminds me of a Byzantine cataphract. The helmet is falling close, like Byzantine cat might have, but the style of it seems very early Anglo-Saxon. It's just kind of a hotspot, so it more reminds me of a Byzantine cataphract than of Anglo-Saxon soldier that I've ever seen. Once again, if you see all kind of un mess of a battle where we have people down on both sides just mess everywhere, and see how you just kind of always see even number of both sides, this is why you do not fight in the scattered form. Ah! Uh, now for a one on one duel, and okay, I'm gonna comment on this so we see it no more. If we. It's a little hard to get a pit image of it. Let me pull back a little bit. But if we look at this sword, this is clearly a long sword that this cataphract, some of you have Anglo Saxon cataphract wearing a helmet that has a Roman or Greek style crest. Yeah, not very accurate. I can tell you that, but, but that sword is very anarchistic. That appears to be, if we look at typologies, a oak shot typology type 13A sword. It's an early form of long sword that did start appearing in the 12th century, but that's after the Viking Age. And definitely after when this is supposed to be. Most prominently appearing in the 14th century. You can tell clearly by the relatively straight parallel edges. Large guard, long grip, yeah. Not the right period. Also, if we want these looping swings, this guy does. What our Viking friend here should have done at this point is in a covered 
they were really essential. So they covered the rust only in sort of two ends, even though to one hand it's sort of the ass, but it still work. And try to thrust that guy's armpit or or neck, as you can see, those are somewhat open in this guy's outfit. And even if it failed to cover thrust and impacted the enemies, just should block this wide, overswung, overwound up, overly terrorographed swing, as often depicted in games and movies. Even a really heavy hit with a sword would not throw someone back like that. And if it did, if you could generate that much force, the thing being hit would be sheer than half. He's got all the armor, but his legs are unguarded. But to penetrate the sword deep into the leg, that is something that can happen. That is actually good. Ah! Oh, now someone's armor works! If you see, earlier, armor did not work. But now, with this boss, armor works. His armor works. That's actually good. That armor should work pretty effectively against cuts and thrusts. But it... Some reason in, the, in her arms, the armpits, the legs left open, which is. It was done, but there's a seems to be very inspired by cataphract, which I'm not sure why we have a cataphract in Anglo Saxon England. But yeah, it's a hodgepodge. <laughs> Spinning, uh, uh, when he did that spin, what our Viking friend should have done was run into his back, stop him from spinning. Pushing off his helmet and hacking into his head. And. Yeah. Why is everyone watching this duel? I have no idea. Shouldn't they continue to be fighting? Yeah. We don't know why everyone's watching this duel. Dramatic effect. Ah, uh, we see the Assassin's Creed hidden blade appear. Clearly, that's not historical. But, if he had that a blade like that, or some type of hidden weapon, he should have used that earlier when this weird Anglo-Saxon cataphract down foot closed in, and was doing his weird overly swings, and blocked with his main weapon. Stopping the blow and closing in and thrusting with that to the eye slot. And that's how you deal with someone with armor. But yes, stabbing them in the eye when they're wearing armor, that's the proper way to do it. What is the soul of man? Assassin's Okay, so it appears heavily fantasized. At least we didn't see horned helmet. I'm glad about that. But it's heavily fantasized. I would say, compared with some of the other Assassin's Creed games, I expect it to be less historically accurate than some of the others. Some ways it was good, some ways it was bad. Lots of anarchisms. But we'll see when it comes out. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe.